G'day, welcome to the Tech Math Channel. I'm Josh. This video is all about understanding calculus in under 10 minutes, which seems like a pretty difficult task, right? Because calculus is really hard. Yeah, it's a, that big pinnacle part of maths that we all feel like we're going to uh, climb at one stage. I'm just going to make this little proviso straight away. This is not mastering calculus in under 10 minutes. You're not going to be a professor under 10 minutes. I'm sorry, no video is going to be allowed you to do that. This is all about just understanding what's going on with calculus in under 10 minutes. So let's get to this. So first off, what is calculus used for in maths? Calculus helps us pretty much understand two different things in maths. The first one of these we're going to have a look at is working out area and volume of complex shapes. The second one of these, working out rates of change, especially where we start to get squiggly little graphs where all sorts of things are going on and things are constantly changing. Calculus helps us understand what's going on and can tell us the rates of change at any given point. So let me show you both of these. So first off, the first part, working out area and volume of complex shapes. So say I was to give you this particular shape right now, uh, a nice simple shape, not complex at all. Uh, it is a rectangle. You're doing pretty well so far, right? And we wanted to work out the area of this. Now, do you remember how to work out the area of a rectangle? It is the length multiplied by the width. We use this formula, length times width, right? Pretty cool. Do those, multiply that by that, you got your answer. Okay, what about a more complex shape? What about if I still got a nice simple shape, but it's a bit more complex, which is one of these, a circle. I don't want it to work out the area of that. Okay, you might know the formula for this one here, area. We have this point from the uh, middle to the edge here, which is the radius. The area is equal to pi, 3.14, times the radius squared. Okay, another formula we could use to work out area. And you can imagine I could start putting different shapes there, hexagons and parallelograms, or even I could start to get into volume and we could start to put in uh, cubes and cones and uh, cylinders and things like this and spheres. And we all have these different formulas that we use here, but what do we do when we get more complex shapes where we don't have a formula? This is where we use calculus. So let me give you an example of this. So say for instance we had this particular shape here. I'm going to draw an xy axis to help us understand this a little bit. So we have an axis here and it has a y axis and an x axis and we're going to draw a curve on this where this curve is coming out like this here. Okay and it goes this way as well. Now if I was to draw some values on our x axis here we have one, two, three, four, five, and I'm going to give an example of a complex shape here. Say we were after the area that was bound between three on the x-axis here and five on the x-axis underneath this curve. Okay, we want the area of this particular curve right here. How do we do that? Well, we could use calculus to work out the area of this bound area. So let's go through and do this. Now, the way that we do this is as follows. In calculus, we have to have a description of what this curve is doing. So what we do is we have a description of this curve and it's called a function. So for this particular curve here, this function, this function for x is described by the following equation. The function of x is equal to x squared. All right, so as long as we have a description of this function, we can use calculus to find out the area. Now, functions can be used to describe all sorts of different little curves. So, you know, it, it does get more and more complex as we go along, but we're going to start out nice and simply. So, the way that we solve for this particular area here is we're going to use, well, first off, this symbol right here, which is the integral symbol. All right, and we're going to be working out the bound area between 5 and 3 for the function of x squared. We're going to be working out the integration of that there right there. That's what that little dx there right means. So we're going to use this setup to solve for the area that's bound there. So how do we do this? Well, we're going to use an integration rule to do this. Now, look, obviously the further you go into calculus, the more and more rules you're going to get, the more complex we go. But the first most basic integration rule that we have here is this one here. When we look at x squared here, and what we do is we look at this power here, we add one to it. So two plus one is equal to three. And then we put this x over three, all over three. So we have this rule here, x to the power of three over three. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna substitute in the values for five and for three, and take one off the other, 
and we are going to get our area. All right, so let's go through and do this. So first off, we could have for five here, and we would end up with x to the power of three. This is going to be five to the power of three over three, minus, and we put three into the x value over here, we have three to the power of three, and that is also going over three. Okay, so what do we get when we go through and solve this? Now you can go through and you could solve this and you can go five times five times five, which is equal to 125 over three. And from this, we're gonna subtract three times three times three, which is 27 over three. And if you really, really wanted, you could go through now and solve this just using fractions. 125 over three minus 27 over three. Well, that's going to be equal to uh, let me have a look. It's going to be equal to 32 and two-thirds units squared. All right. And there you go. That's an example of where we have used calculus to solve a more complex shape here. Now, you're going to say, okay, that's a that's a nice simple shape there. What about as you get more and more complex shapes? So say we weren't just looking at this particular shape here, but we also had a, then a bottom on it that was, you know, we're not only looking at this X bit here, but we're also going to be having a shape here. And we looked between here and and here, right? And we wanted to work out this particular area. Well, as we get more and more complex, we get more and more complex rules. We might even get into volume where we go through and we spin this around an axis, all right? Once again, as we get more and more complex in calculus, we get more and more complex rules. So that's the first problem that calculus is used to solve. Now, if you like this video so far, please give us a big thumbs up. I'm sacrificing a bit of the 10 minutes to ask you to do that, so do us a solid and maybe leave a comment telling me what you think so far. But we're gonna to get to the second thing that calculus is used to solve right now, which is rates of change. So I'll start out with a nice example of a nice simple graph. We have an X and a Y axis here, and say we had a nice linear graph. Cool, right? You have this nice straight line going up, and we wanted to describe the slope, how much it's moving up for how long it goes across. Well, this is pretty simple. The slope, is easily described in a linear graph as the rise over the run. What does this mean? Well, you get two different points, any two different points, you choose them and you literally say, okay, this is how much it's risen, the rise, and this is how much it's run at that stage, the run, you divide one by the other and you get your slope. Pretty easy, right? And as you can see, for a linear graph, it goes up as a regular amount. However, what do we do where we start to get a more realistic type graph? What about if we were to talk about something like a share market graph where it started and it went down a bit and then moved across and as you can see here, a graph like this, well, all of a sudden it doesn't have a particular slope that's uh, you know a characteristic of this graph here. It's, as you can see, it's going down here and it's a negative gradient at one stage, a negative slope, and at here it's going to a positive slope. Here, maybe we're saying it's a little bit different there you know it's hitting these different stages where it's hitting these different slopes so how can you go through and work out the slope at any given point now this is where calculus is really cool so rather than actually just going okay we're going to choose two different points and we'll try to work out this average slope calculus allows us to get the exact slope at an exact point on this graph and this is how it does this so let me show you this using the following curve the following curve where we have fx is equal to we have 2x squared minus 3x plus 2. Okay, cool. So say I was to draw this. Uh, in fact, I will draw this. I'll put an axis there. We have this axis right here. Uh, and we'll put a few values on it. We have a 1, 2, 3 on the x axis. And we have 1, 2, 3 on the y axis. Well, this particular function here, if I was to draw it, well, it'd come down through 2 here. And just about here, it would curve around and go back up, okay? And that's what this particular curve looks like. How would we go through and work out the slope, which you can see varies at different points? This point here, which is different to this point here, which is different to this point here. So with this curve, which is described by 2x squared minus 3x plus 2, we can use a thing which is called the derivative of the slope. We write that as the following f of x to work out a rule which allows us to work out the exact slope on the curve at any given point. So the way that we do this is as follows. The rule that we use to do this is as follows, and it's pretty simple. The first thing we do is starting at 2x squared, we look at our two here, and the two that we're multiplying, you know, they are power, and we multiply these. So two times two is equal to four. We keep our x, 
and then we drop the power by one. So x to the power of two, we take away that one there, it's gonna become x to the power of one, which is just the same as writing for x. Now what we do is we go to the next part here. So minus, as you can see here, we have uh, negative three and x to the power of one. Negative three times one is negative three. And we drop the power of x here by one also. So that becomes x to the power of zero. Now x to the power of zero is just one. So we just leave it there. Now as you can see, we can't take this any further. So what we've done is we've created a rule which allows us to work out the slope of this particular function at any given point. And there you go. Uh, let me show you this in action here. So say we were to say uh, where x equals two, and we will say, okay, what's the slope also at x equals, uh, what about five? Well, what we do is we start substituting in these values, okay? So what we do, uh, if x is equal to two, four x is equal to eight, minus three, the slope is going to be equal to eight, minus three is equal to five. And at x equals five, the slope is going to be equal to, well, four times five is equal to 20, minus three is equal to 17, okay? So that is the way that you can go through and create a rule to work at any given point there. Calculus can be used to do that. Anyway, that is my understanding calculus in under 10 minutes. How did you go? The two things that you can use calculus to understand. First off, the area and volume of complex shapes with those curves. You know that gets more complex as we go along. And secondly, working out the exact slope on a curve at any given point. And you might say, okay, that's pretty cool. And it is, right? If you like this video and you thought that's pretty cool, hit the like button and subscribe. If you've learned something brand new, definitely hit the like button and leave me a comment telling me what you learned. Anyway, thank you for watching. A big shout out to my patrons. If you wish to support the Tech Math channel, there is a link in the description below. Anyway, see you next time.